Okay, hi folks. Welcome to my 8-Bit Retro Journal. Today I'm uh, creating a, um, a cable. Uh, so this is a uh, RS-232 DB9 male connector. And, uh, ooh, it's a little hot. And this is, uh, so it's male to male. And uh, basically I'm playing with my, um, let me turn this off as well. Turn, uh, playing with my, uh, eight, my uh, this is an RS-232 uh, uh, retro Wi-Fi I got back in December. And what this does um, is it uh, 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 lets your old retro computer uh, hook to wire, wireless. So this has a microcontroller chip. I think it's the ESP8266 board which runs along the top. And then there's an additional RS-232 uh, interface board to hook that serial connector to a standard RS-232 and add some buffering. And uh, this has, uh, on firmware, it has built-in AT Hayes command set, so old school modem stuff. And so your computer actually thinks it's it's communicating via Hayes, but this actually has a micro control that can do the entire uh, TCP IP stack and, and Wi-Fi. Um, I've played with it a little bit on a, on a uh, PC, but this is the first time I'm gonna try to play with it on the QR, so I have to create this cable right here. Um, and uh, uh, what I eventually want to do is uh, see if I can actually uh, maybe grab some HTML pages and and, uh, and parse them. Uh, I don't know if this one will let me do it. I might have to build my own, which I want to do. They're not. They're not. The, the cards aren't that expensive. Uh, I think you can get them for like four or five bucks, and the serial card is like a couple of dollars. So it's pretty easy to do, uh, and they come with different firmware. I think this has a specialized firmware for retro computers. Uh, okay, so uh, anyway, so I had to create this cable, and so the um, the QL, uh, which is the virtual computer that I'm going to be using, um, has uh, uh, the back of it, uh, the, the U.S. version, uh, as well as, uh, I think, the German version, has four DB9 connectors, two male and two female, uh, whereas the, the U.K. versions have these um, telephone connectors that are standard in the U.K., from a picture of them so uh, and what so it turns out that these DB9 connectors are actually not very standard uh, they basically just use the first five pins ground transmit receive uh, ready to send uh, uh, clear to send um, or ready for input ready for output basically is what this is saying um, uh, and so uh, yeah ready to uh, Clear to send, uh, uh, ready for input. I feel what RTS stands for. Um, and uh, and so this is not what the standard RS-232 uh, plug actually looks like. So what I want to do is uh, create a mail, standard mail plug. Uh, and you can see right here, that's what a standard mail plug looks like. And that's what a standard female plug looks like. So my uh, retro Wi-Fi is going to uh, be this that plugs into that. And you can take a look at, uh, right, so this this has a female DB9, and I want to create a male DB9. And so um, the uh, so this is the one I want to create. And so it's a little confusing how they word this, because they call this the, the transmit and receive, although it's the transmit from the device. So it's really input. And it's the receive from the device, so it's really output. And so um, I think I'm going to have to flip these. So in other words, I, I'm not going to map... This is the QL and this is the standard. Um, all right, so this is the QL. Well, let me do it this way. <clears throat> so I'm going to use serial one because it's for communication equipment like a modem. Serial two is kind of set up. They just flip the the ports around and it's uh, transmit and, and send uh, as well as the. RTS and CTS, but I'm going to st stick with the standard uh, serial one port, and you can see that he wants input and output on pins one and two, and this is getting input on pin two, uh, I'm sorry, pins two and three. He wants input on pin two and output on pin three, and this receives input on pin two and transmit on pin three. So even though this, so this is receive and transmit in and out, and even though this says flips the TX and RD around, it's really um, it really, I think you should say RX and TX because it's it's input. So it's the, it's the connection for the transmit of, of the um, of the female connector. Basically, is what it's saying. 
Um, so it wants, uh, so I want to map pin two to pin two, pin three to pin three, and then uh, data terminal ready or ready RTS ready for input uh, and CTS are going to just be mapped to pin seven and pin eight respectively. So that's the cable I've just created. If you take a look at it, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, um, but so the QL it's quite simple. I use the first, uh, um, I use the first. Uh, five uh, or six actually right um the first five one two three four five and then pins uh six seven eight nine on the other side so just use the first five so uh if pin one is ground that's black uh, uh red is the input or receive white is transmit green is uh rts and the one without a band is cts and so mapping that to um, to this connector here, it's exactly what I've done. So I've got um, uh, pin five is ground. Um, so that's black. So that was pin one on, on the QL. So I've mapped pin one ground to pin five on this connector. So again, the QLs is uh, black is pin one and it's pin five on this connector and then pins two and three red and white stay pins two and three and then I flip it around and uh, green which was pin four uh, RTS should connect to pin seven RTS which it is and then pin eight is the one without a color should be CTS which was pin five and that's what pin five was here uh, pin five was here right so one two three four five so I've I think I've matched it up properly, so let's see if it works. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in these cases. So this is the uh, modem side. Um, and these are simple little cases to, uh, uh, yep, you put on and then you just. There we go. And uh, on the other side, all right, so this, oops, uh, this is the modem side, so so I don't screw it up. I'll mark it eventually, but this is the, uh, the QL side. So I'll stick this on the modem port. Yeah, so it's not like USB where you can just, any old plug works, so you really have to work at it. So again, if you have a different retro computer, you probably want to check its specifications and um, you kind of have to work through it. It's not always uh, straightforward, especially when the, uh, I mean, I, I find on the QL, these markings very confusing, TX, RX. I mean, TX should be output like it is for Zero 2, but here they're saying, no, this is the, the input of the TX of our receiver. So that makes a little sense, um, but, uh, um, I think what I've done will work. Um, and again, if it doesn't, I'll just have to unsolder and flip those wires. There's only four wires you have to deal with, really. It's the TX, RX, and then the D RTS and CTS. Um, I'm not sure why it's not going in. There we go. So this is the QL side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, plug this into the serial port 1 on the QL. And then I'm going to boot it up, and I'm going to try to get a better picture of my monitor. Uh, so let me do that. Okay, so we're at the uh, um, QL boot screen, and I'm going to hit F2 for TV mode. I should have mentioned about the retro Wi-Fi that it actually requires external power. It has a, a micro USB uh, socket, so you got to plug it in. So let me plug this into my USB hub. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds to um, uh, uh, for the firmware to, to boot up. Um, I do have on my QL, I do have a uh, terminal program that I wrote in the early 90s called um, Term. And so I'm going to use that to uh, uh, log in uh, to my first bulletin board, which is what I'm going to use it for. I eventually want to use this, as I said, to, uh, to parse HTML pages. But for now, I'm going to try it uh, out of the box as advertised. So exec there are other terminal programs out there, but uh, you know here I can control how it works. The other ones tend to uh, fall off the bottom of the screen on the U.S. machines because of the way the uh, uh, TV signal or the PAL signal is done. So this one takes up 
uh, a good portion of it. Uh, by default, the retro Wi-Fi actually um, starts at 1200 mode, so I should, if my cable works, oh look, my cable works, yay. So it says here that, if I remember, there is an AT plus config, and that gives you menu options, and you've got Wi-Fi, Flow, Echo. Uh, so I want Echo on, but um, the flow control, uh, I'm going to change that first, uh, because it, it gives you X on, X off, which is software flow control, or RTS, CTS, which is what I made the cable, if you remember. So let's use that. And then let's add Wi-Fi. Um, and let's see if it finds my router. Yep, there it is, number 11. It's only 47% and it's right under the table. It's kind of funny. I'm going to stop the video here because you don't get to see my password. And back, uh, yeah, it was like 10 or 15 seconds, but um, but you can see that uh, we're logged in now, uh, connected to Slinky, uh, 192.168.0.10. Picture's a little shimmery, uh, but we're ready to go. So now uh, Simulink says that this is a... So I did try this earlier on my Windows machine through uh, uh, an SSH program, because you can through a Telnet program. Uh, so you can actually do it directly on your computer without Wi-Fi, uh, retro Wi-Fi. But the cool thing is I can now do it on my QL. And it's Amstrad simulint.uk port is 464. And here we go. And this is a, a Linux. Uh, this is it runs on Linux. And I'm going to log in as guest. I haven't committed yet to logging in. Uh, no, I don't do ANSI. And no, I don't have extended. But you can see that my terminal program does do uh, uh, control characters. So my name, my email address. city and state I heard it from retro Wi-Fi all right and here it prints uh, oh yeah Amstrad in ASCII in all its ASCII glory which is kind of cool hmm I don't know what it did kind of screwed up the screen a little bit but uh, hit any key to continue and uh, enter number of a bulletin to view or press last few callers has been looks like it's been all me again like I said I tried it a few times on te using a telnet program uh, okay and here is the what do we get here oh yeah this is the main memory menu I remember now Oh, look, so yeah, Amstrad, um, and uh, so I don't have quite 24 columns, which is what you kind of need. Uh, so, um, yeah, what do we got? A new message, read, continue, new scan, view, vote, and polls. Find text and messages. No, jump to a new message area, file transfer section, chat, and external programs. No, what's external programs? Read send email, other commands, default user config. Oh, they got games. Uh, cannons and catapults. Well, let's see what that is. Now oh, it's using some control characters that I don't seem to work on. Uh, hit any key to continue. The object of cannon is to defeat King Computer. There are three ways to do this. You destroy his castle, defeat the army, or have him assassinated. If this sounds easy to your request, you should be warned that the King Computer is no pushover. Although it seems that the game is rigged, the odds are exactly even. A lot of work as thousands of games have gone into making King Computer as smart as possible. If you, it's you against him, play carefully. You each will receive one point for every soldier killed, one point for every castle, uh, castle point destroyed 1,000 points for each guard passed by an assassin then when successful the loser loses their points the scoreboard resets every month all right no I'm not gonna play I need to fix my program before I can do that so anyway this is uh yeah 
Uh, well, we've proven that uh, my cable works and the QL can uh, 9600 baud's uh, Oh, it's actually a 1200 baud. Um, oh, I never changed the baud rate. Uh, yeah, so I could actually do that. Uh, let's see if that would be faster. So let me, let's log out of that. And uh, so if I do ATB9600 and then change mine to 9600 ATD, oops, ATDT Amstrad Simulant ah. four six four should be a bunch faster well it's using it's doing stop and go obviously so again guest no yeah so it's definitely faster but when the ql has has to stop it'll stop for the ql uh, but the the keyboard feedback is faster oh what's an email address Retro Y5. Um, so this is 9600 bots. It's, it's definitely a, a little faster, but I think the RTS-CTS does uh, impact it. I think this is, um, I don't feel it being all that much slower. Um, but it can. Uh, uh, so here we go again. Yep, doesn't. It doesn't really feel um, six times faster, I guess, is what 9600 is. is it? No, eight, seven, eight, eight times faster. It doesn't feel eight times faster. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to quit out of this again. And yes, I want to log off. So uh, that's really all I wanted to show you on that. I can uh, quit out of this. And the only other thing to show you is... Um, Just the code for this, uh, uh, which I will be modifying uh, eventually to uh, uh, make it more VT100 compliant. Um, yeah, again, there's other good uh, terminal programs out there, but um, I always like to write my own. It's kind of empowering. I was just going to go through it quickly and show you what it looks like. Um, again, the Unfortunately, the screen uh, shimmer is, yeah, so here it is, April 24th, 1993. Um, so these are just the default values. This is where I create this, the screen, the main screen and the menu, or what I call the header. Uh, I then have a log to, to various uh, um, MDVs. Um, I, and I need to change that to allow for any device um, and these are just all the, uh, the, the, the header and changing stuff in the menu, basically. Um, and the main, you know, so this is the log, uh, the, uh, this is the menu itself. Um, the, the main code is at the very end and it's the connect code, which we're coming up to, um, right here. And this is basically a, a big switch statement where, uh, control 13 was M, control N. Yeah, so these are the various control characters that you don't have to handle appropriately. Uh, and then if it's none of those, at the very end, it's just uh, um, an actual character or, and then this is uh, uh, grabbing characters from from the ql side of things anyway that's how you write a travel program so i'll probably update this but retro wi-fi is uh what i wanted to show you today 
and uh, pretty cool, huh? So if you have any uh, comments, or uh, leave them below. And uh, thanks for joining uh, me today, and stay safe.